Uh, I always start with these two sentences because I... Reach the mic, please. Uh, because I think that we have... Uh, uh, we need to meditate on them. The first one is observers pour la plus grande part imaginaire imaginaire c'est que l'on s'entend à quoi that in English sounds like, sounds like uh, to observe for the major part is just uh, to imagine what will it, will, will, it, will it, it happen okay and so just to to, uh, to draw your attention uh, to the po to the fact that uh, uh, the representation of reality that our brain creates is just uh, a, a fantastic uh, holographic projection that uh, we don't even imagine. And uh, uh, and then you later you you understand why I. I start with this uh, slide. The second one is Le seul véritable voyage, ce ne serait pas d'aller vers un nouveau paysage, mais d'avoir notre projet. And so, a, a true research uh, um, uh, uh, journey uh, is not uh, just to discover new countries, new, uh, new territories, but uh, to have new eyes. We need new eyes. And so we need a new framework to refer to. And so the, my presentation is articulated this way, from simple to complex systems, just to share with you the basic understanding where we fail to, uh, to develop new things using the past approach. And so from linear to nonlinear systems, more powerful to, tools needed. And then conclusion, continuing this good integrated framework and the uh, AMS modeling solution by CICD that is just uh, a proposal that uh, I am more open to anything else. And just uh, uh, as a measure of fact, from, uh, I am interested in your feedback on that. So what is an arbitrary complex multi-scale system? Because we, as a matter of fact, we are dealing with arbitrary complex multi-scale systems without realizing that maybe. This is just a simple example, okay? I think that you can recall something for that. Huh? Uh, another example, for instance, arbitrary complex just uh, try to model humans, and this is just the past approach that uh, you see uh, different slices that uh, are focused on, on different subsystems. An example, for instance, uh, starting from amino acids and just uh, going up uh, to tissues. Hmm? With the, all the steps that you can compute and you, you can create. And so just to give you an idea that just corresponded to the previous slide, this is for instance at, at, at university what uh, you, uh, we're doing. Uh, to model that kind of situation. We start from quantum mechanism uh, uh, model, just uh, from the bottom. And then uh, uh, we start, uh, go up, 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 until to the continuum, uh, continuous model, that is the, for instance, in the, in the case of just the final. The point is that, as you can see, uh, we have, uh, uh, we focus on different, different uh, scales, but though they are not connected. <coughs> We, are just, we have just model for quantum mechanical model, then we have a, a whole item model, but then we need to connect them. And so, all the other levels. Don, can I just um, make a quick point here? It might be worthwhile for the benefit of those who don't come from a complex system background who clarify the definition of a sim simple system versus a complex I, I, system. Yes, yes, I have there. But that was just the introduction to and, and to add to that, why, why the word arbitrary? Yeah, that's what I was because some of us are familiar with complex adaptive systems, but you're introducing a new distinction. Yeah. And I'd love to know what you're implying by that. Arbitrary because uh, we, we have a model that can be applied, applied on many scales, but then you can choose the starting, the starting scale that you like. You mean like a scale-free network? Is that the same thing? No, it's not. It's not scale-free. It's scale -free. The model allows you to be just set in a way that uh, is able to give you more, more result, but 
then you have to choose the starting, the, the origin of all this, the story, the scale, the origin scale. That's the reason the, the, for the name arbitrary, okay? It's not a fixed, fixed scale. And so current scientific approach is articulated only in the two large areas that you can take into consideration just the, the spatial or, uh, scale or the temporal scale, and then we get all the kind of that kind of information in, in that way. And again, scale by scale, and then we have to find a solution to just to link them together. Think about it, that any time you want to leave something arbitrarily, you just input entropy in the system. And so you are to bring the final solution. That might be not the natural one. And so we use, we use the, that approach everywhere, you know, on all the scale. And then we build silos that are unable to communicate. They are not linked to one another. And we lose a lot of information. Just a simple example, just to thank you for your recalling me <laughs> to just a, a simple example and basic ideas. You, I think that this one is quite well known to everybody. That is the basic, the basic uh, reference uh, that, uh, for instance, uh, when you want to uh, 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 you want to study something, you have the, on the on the left the natural system, then you have the, a group of experts that I try to interpret that natural system and try to transform that natural system properties in something like a, a formal system, a representation system, and then. When you have the representation system, then you can go through the historical database that you already already collected from uh, your activities in the past, and then you get more information from them, and then you can find a solution for a specific problem and try to apply the solution uh, through the operative interpretation to the reality that you already studied. But this is a loop. When you have a solution, the natural system has already changed. So it's not something really solid. It's something that depends on the delay that you apply your, your solution to the real system. And uh, from a, a, a digital control point of view, they, on, the, on the bottom you see the block diagram that is corresponding to the, to the diagram that I showed you before. And it, this is called the, a linear feedback system linear feedback system that is this, the kind of system that got us to the moon. Okay? Unfortunately, uh, we, got, uh, <laughs> we got to the moon, but uh, somebody uh, uh, forget that uh, uh, it's not just the, the men on the moon that reached the moon, but was even the control room with 150 people <coughs> controlling all the parameters and pre uh, to be sure that not everything stayed into the interval of the design systems. And that was the art part of the story. Because when you interact with nature, you never know if you got the right interval. And you have to reduce everything to stay, to be sure that they stay, you stay in the right interval and your astronauts get, get, get to life. And so we see only one part of the story. But if you, we want to go to the reality, this is the, just a simple example. When you start passing from non-linear uh, from, from to non-linear, you see you don't, you don't have just a, a nice, nice simple model. You have something that is really more difficult to understand. And this is the job what, what we are facing. We are passing from a linear approach, that is the, reduction, the reductionist approach, to the nonlinear one, that is the complex one. That is the one you see there. So that's uh, something that's really difficult to grasp if, we, if you are not well trained. And even for people that are well trained, <laughs> sometimes it's really difficult anyway. And uh, the, the, only, the only good thing is that when uh, you have to deal with the, with the complex system, 
you already know in advance that the, the asymptotic regime of any complex system uh, has only four possible regimes. That is stationary, periodic, quasi-periodic, and in 1963, we had the fourth one that is chaotic because the Lorentz model showed us that uh, uh, you know, uh, behind the uh, uh, weather uh, forecasting, we have a chaotic attractor. And so, from 1963, we start thinking that uh, maybe nature is a little more complicated than we assumed before. <laughs> and so, think about 1963, little time, and, and, and we want just to be able to, to, you know, to dominate that kind of complexity with so little time of experience. And so complexity is the impossibility of separating a system from its context. <coughs> Sorry. A living being from its environment and an object from its measuring instrument. <coughs> Sorry, could you go back to the previous slide, please? And so I have no time just to, to, to go into details, but this uh, actual situation is the current situation is this one. That we want to focus on the mesoscale, the, the system in the center, and we, according to the current approach, we have two possibilities. All starting from the top, with the top-down approach, but then when the more we go down, the less signal we get, because a lot of noise is coming over. So we try a different solution. We start from the bottom, and we go up from the bottom up. But unfortunately, sooner or later, we reach a ceiling, because we get a combinatorial explosion. And both of them, both approaches, just gives you a gray area to study the system you are interested in most. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I have no time to go to the resilient uh, uh, just, uh, system, but uh, uh, I want you to just to underline the current system fragility. And so, we have to, to pass from simple modeling to complex modeling, but we need more powerful tools. Speak. Like this one. This is, a, and I that finished there, no. Uh, um, no. when we have to solve a problem from the past, the usual approach is that to focus on the, on the problem, on the time space, we get a Euclidean representation of, of the problem, that is the usual one we use to study, and that's it. And we completely ignore that is only just a little part of the information we can take advantage of because we completely ignore the core dynamic space, the reciprocal space, and the reciprocal co space that you can use in your experimental stuff to, to get to gather more information. But even worse than that is that, that ignoring those parts, we ignore their relationship. And the relationships that are the yeah. most important part of the story. That's the point. Okay, so the conclusion that, that we have two different tracks to, to use, the past one is half, half uh, from a mathematical point, mathematical point of view, is half plane space, but uh, and with all the limitations, but it can be good for specific problems. So that you, have, you have to always do it to see they compromise, the operational compromise. And then you, we have another one that is much better for living matter, but is more costly. So it's up to us which one we want to use. But anyway, I don't want to. I think we need to. We need to give a little time yeah, to discuss. Okay, that's, that's it. So using this approach, then we can get uh, uh, the solution to the previous problem. You see there that uh, you, uh, I just. Uh, you get this kind of solution. You don't have the, uh, the, the gray area any longer. 